What do Elkhorn corals, leatherback sea turtles, and Hawaiian monk seals have in common? They are all protected under the U.S. Endangered Species Act. The Endangered Species Act of 1973 is one of the most effective conservation laws in the United States. Using science-based management plans, it has prevented the extinction of 99% of the species it protects. So how does it work? The U.S. Congress put the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in charge of land and freshwater species and NOAA's National Marine Fisheries Service in charge of marine species. These agencies can review the status of a species on their own or concerned citizens or groups can petition the agencies to list a species. After a thorough review process, a species can be classified as either endangered or threatened if necessary. Endangered means the species is in danger of extinction throughout all or a significant part of its range. Threatened means the species is likely to become endangered in the foreseeable future. If a species is listed as endangered, it is illegal to kill, harass, harm, or capture it without special permission. Threatened species may be given many of the same protections. Once a species is listed, the agency in charge can designate the species' federally protected habitat. They'll also develop a recovery plan to guide government and private efforts to help the species and get it out of danger. Today, the Endangered Species Act protects over 2,140 listed species. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and NOAA continue to develop new technologies and management approaches to ensure the Endangered Species Act remains effective and that endangered species populations can rebound and their habitats can recover. A healthy ocean needs strong and sustainable populations of all marine species, and the Endangered Species Act has gone a long way to keeping it so. Did you know that sea turtles have been living on planet Earth since the time of the dinosaurs? Around 110 million years. There are seven different species of sea turtles, six of which, green, hawksbill, Kemp's Ridley, leatherback, loggerhead, and the olive ridley, can be found throughout the ocean in both warm and cool waters. The seventh species, the flatback, lives only in Australia. What's amazing about sea turtles is that after years traveling the open ocean, they return to the nesting grounds where they were born to lay their eggs. In their voyage from nesting to feeding grounds, some species will travel more than 1,000 miles. But life is filled with danger for a sea turtle, especially the hatchlings. On the beach, birds, crabs, raccoons, even foxes will eat hatchlings. And if hatchlings make it to the ocean, they are still tasty snacks for seabirds and fish. However, the greatest threats to sea turtles aren't from natural predators, they are from humans. Accidental catch in commercial fisheries or entanglement in marine debris are serious threats to sea turtles, as well as destruction of beach habitat, harvesting or poaching for meat and eggs, and even boat strikes. But people aren't just sitting by. Nations are working together to protect and conserve sea turtles. In 1981, an international agreement made it illegal to trade all seven species of sea turtles and their eggs, shells, or meat internationally. Governments are figuring out ways to reduce bycatch, such as requiring new designs of fishing gear and changes to fishing practices to make them less likely to capture turtles. And marine protected areas are being established in important sea turtle habitats. Conservation organizations are working with local communities to help change fishing practices, as well as transition incomes away from turtle harvesting and toward turtle tourism. Other local efforts include working to reduce sources of marine debris, monitoring sea turtle nests to protect them from poaching, and passing laws that prevent irresponsible development on known nesting beaches. A healthy ocean depends on sea turtles, and sea turtles need our help.